Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Julie, I have a question for you. Yes. Do you remember, uh, (laughs) well, we've been married for 31 years Mm -hmm. this year in September. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you remember when you and I first got married, um, we were starting to take goal setting seriously. We'd read uh, Think and Grow Rich a number of times, even when we were in high school. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Listeners, is one of the greatest books you ever want to read. If you really want to get to the essence of mindset, just read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Everything that comes after that is essentially an iteration of that book, taking uh, Napoleon Hill's ideas and sort of modernizing them. But just read the book. It's free, by the way, because it's in the public domain. And you can also, uh, I believe you can even download an audible version of it where he's reading it, uh, Napoleon Hill in his, obviously his own voice. But in any event, so do you remember when we read that book and it was our, like we'd just gotten married and you and I were starting to goal set and we were living in that crappy little apartment on a busy road <laughs> yep. in uh, Columbus, Ohio. And we were thinking about what we could do, you know, obviously in professionally and personally and all that. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I do. And that's when you and I made our first, again, using Napoleon Hill as our inspiration. Mm-hmm. We started to write down goals. And one of the things I'll never forget it was so meaningful. And I was so grateful that you and I learned that when we were just 20 and 21, yes. right? Is that we were, it wasn't just enough to write down a goal. You had to have an action plan that followed it. Mm-hmm. A goal is a dream with an action plan. It's something that Napoleon says. And a, a goals must be measurable, specific, and written down regularly, or if not written down, really visited regularly. And that's really the essence of why some people will be successful consistently at setting goals and others won't. It's because they'll write a goal down, but they won't actually create the plan behind it to make the goal happen. And that's one of the most critical missing elements in a lot of the mind stuff, the mindset stuff that's out there. And by the way, you guys will also, those of you who've been uh, you know, podcast listeners and coaching clients and have been with Julie and I for our long real estate career and our coaching career, you'll know that one of the things that we really take a lot of effort doing is breaking things down to micro points. So like when, for example, you're in premier coaching and you're studying how to go on a listing appointment, it's not just, you know, Mickey Mouse high level, here's the four steps on a listing appointment. We take you through all the tiny, tiniest little micro steps all the way down to, um, you know, when you walk to the front door, you take two steps back after you ring the doorbell. When you open the door, you take your shoes off. We even suggest you what kinds of shoes you should wear. We suggest you all the little tiny things that maybe you'll take for granted. And then the problem is, is if you take them for granted, you show up at a listing appointment, you screw one of those things up. We don't want you to lose on the job because it's too expensive to lose on the job, to learn on the job rather, because you show up, you make a mistake, you don't get the listing. You then discover Julie and I's you know, book or a podcast or a coaching business. And then you say, well, I wish I would have done that. I probably would have taken that listing. You would be shocked how frequently you will or won't be successful in life in general, not based on just some sort of broad sweeping macro thing, but based on tiny little nuanced differences. And just think on your own behavior. You choose people to be your friends based on some little idiosyncratic detail about them. And that's the same thing that every, that's the same mechanism, you know, that everyone's going to uh, be using, especially in a hyper competitive real estate market, which is what we're going to be entering into is if you don't have a high level of skill set, if you don't have, as the French like to call it, a certain je ne sais quoi, the it factor, you're going to never get the le- or achieve the level of success you otherwise, otherwise would. Well, that goes back to goal setting. So when you're goal setting, you have to have the micro steps that are going to follow up with what the goal is. A goal is a dream with an action plan. And I'll share with listeners what one of my first goals was. Mm-hmm. And this is when you and I first got married again, and I was 21 and you were 20, yep. and I wanted to buy a Ferrari, mm-hmm. right, by the time I was 30. Yes. I was a car nerd, Magnum PI, the whole thing, and I really, really wanted to do this. But it was 10 years off, and I didn't really quite know how we were going to do it, or you know, so but we figured it out. Mm-hmm. Now, I was 30 in six months when I bought it, yeah. but it is something that we had accomplished together. Because mm-hmm. what happened was, this, and I'm just giving you guys this story, and then we're going to go into the specific steps and how to actually apply this. 
is having a specific goal of that example being a Ferrari. And understand, Julie and I weren't just poor when we got married. We were literally poor and minus about 50 grand from student loans. <laughs> True. <laughs> which we paid off our first year selling real estate, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but by creating, and some of you are saying, oh, I don't care about cars. That's fine. Choose something else. Taking your kid to Disney World, buying a house, doesn't matter. Buying a bigger house, paying off your kids. You, you guys get it. So when you choose the goal, now 10 years is not something we would suggest. That's a very distant goal, but it was something I'd set for myself. I would, and if I were coaching one of you guys, I'd tell you never to set goals that are maybe more than 36 months out, but just for the sake of what we're talking about. So Julie and I had no business experience. Uh, We had not graduated from college at that point. We did not really have any reason to believe or anyone uh, would have any reasons to believe that we'd be successful really anything in life. You know, really, that's no just, head start on anything. <laughs> no head start. No family money. No, you know, mm-hmm. we were not given anything. We were not born on first base, or we're not born on third base in any way, in any level. Well, but the exception, we had each other. And and I think that we had a reasonably good education coming up. I mean, but mainly we had each other, and we had a focus that we we worked on together. I think that's something important. We talk right. about that in coaching is that you're going on the same path. Uh, But it gets back to the difference between a dream. A dream is something, gosh, you know, it'd be nice to have a Ferrari, right? Versus a goal, which is a dream that has an action plan behind it. That's what I'm getting to. So we, when setting the goal of of buying that Ferrari, which was about as unattainable as you could possibly imagine, especially for us at that point, you can imagine, you guys have all been that age, right? Now, and you all probably were broke when you were that age, just like we were. Well, setting a big lofty goal like that we did not have the mental, really the mental, the, certainly the financial acumen to even come close to accomplishing that or even, but we didn't give up on it. And Julie, you know, she was, she was into it as well because we had, could have experiences. It was something we could accomplish, which she obviously put some, uh, you know, uh, some things for her along the way, buy a house, which we ended up buying our first house, our first real estate transaction we did when we were 22 and 23, still basically almost just barely out of college. We took Mm -hmm. one, we were on like the six year plan. Mm -hmm. But the moral of the story is, is that these are things that when you accomplish big goals, what's going to happen is if you really then create the action plan behind it, you're going to find the world pivots for you. Now, some people will believe it's the power of the universe and you're You're, you're manifesting, you're manifesting and you just think about it long enough and the world's going to bring you, the universe is going to bring you everything you want. And I, that is the woo woo version of what I just said, the, the practical tactical version of, but it's kind of the same. The practical tactical version is a set of really, you know, series of goals and have some big ones and have some small ones. We're going to talk about that today. And then what you're going to have to do is create some action plans behind that. Now, Julie talks about habit stacking a lot. Well, we also are advocates of goal stacking. So in order to say accomplish buying a house in the next three years, you're going to have to do other things. You're going, like we had our trainer back in Puerto Rico. He wanted to buy a house and we figured his house would cost 500 grand. We figured he'd need $100,000 down. So sitting with him at a park bench, basically, we created an action plan. So for him in the next 24 months, he could save up 100,000 by just adding a certain number of private clients per week. And we created this whole plan for him. And then we asked him how he's going to go about uh, getting those clients. And we started talking with him about that. And then we asked him, when will he have those clients? You guys get it? A goal is a dream with an action plan. Well, so in the course of uh, probably less than a 30 minute conversation with our kettlebell trainer, who has the, the goal of buying a house, he went from a dream, I'd like to buy a house. That's, right. that's something I want to do. That's something I dream about doing. Two, at the end of our conversation, driven mainly by you asking lots of great questions, he ended up with an actual plan that was not that uh, hard for him to, to, to conceive that that's something that's going to happen for him. Maybe even sooner than he thinks because he has the action steps in place. You put some numbers behind it. You had a realistic conversation to keep the goals smart. It was realistic based on what he's actually charging, not on having to raise his prices or do anything you know unusual. And at the end, I, I saw on his face a sense of relief and enthusiasm that he now believes that he can do it. Not because, you know, I mean, he's probably been dreaming about it for a few years, but now he's got an actual plan and that's what turned it into a goal. But that's what the accomplishment. No, so here's the thing. I want you to listen to what Julie just said. In order for him to buy the house, he has to help more people. He has to take on more clients and help those clients at the highest level so that they, uh, essentially feel paying him is a good idea. You guys get it? So in other words, he has to be of service to more people for him to accomplish his goal. So when you see people that have accomplished more in their lives, 
it's not because they're necessarily any smarter than you, taller than you, prettier than you, better educated than you, anything. It's just that they, at some point, whether consciously or subconsciously, have locked into the basic human concept that if you want more of uh, anything in life, you have to help other people accomplish the same thing. In other words, we're all here to be of service to other people. And the more people you're of service to, the more experiences that you're going to be able to have. And that is absolutely true. And those are the types of things that by setting the big goal for myself, wanting a Ferrari, when I was a kid, that was one of those things that I figured out along the way. Well, you know, we have to, we can sell one house at a time or Julie and I can decide to be, you know, big listing agents. Now that was an epiphany. So here's what we did. Our first full year in real estate. Guess what? We sold over a hundred houses. We sold with our pendings, 103 units. No one had ever done that before. And from what we're told, no one's ever done that since. And how did we do it? The exact same way we teach you guys in premier coaching. And you have the benefit of essentially being able to save your learning curve that we had to go through, not to mention the hundreds of thousands of coaching calls that we've done to really perfect the system. And by the way, Premier Coaching is free. If you guys want to join Premier Coaching, if hundreds of you have done it so far this month, and I'm sure thousands of you will do it yet this year, absolutely positively join our community. If you want to be around like-minded people who know that their highest and truest purpose of, on this planet is to be of service to other people, who know that in order to do that, they have to essentially provide a level of service that other people need and want and are willing to pay for, then Premier Coaching is the next natural step for you. Move away from the sort of narcissistic normalization of all the social media as your prominent thought with regards to how to build your business. As you know, there are there is a place for that in your business, but the first thing all of you have to do is you have to become really good at real estate practitioners. And that's what premier coaching is all about. And yes, we teach you when you join premier coaching, you get uh, scripts, you get proactive lead generation ideas and systems and plans, passive systems and plans. You get listing presentations, you get uh, social media, uh, how to essentially build a very powerful YouTube channel. You, what, Julie, what are all that? You get the real estate treasure map. Well, objection the, handlers, here's something new, price reduction scripts. Yeah, exactly. Oh my. Uh, we have a whole section about transaction coordination, pretty much everything to make you the kick-ass agent that you intend on being, that you know you have to become as a listing agent, especially in a changing market. We're going to get you there faster than you poking around online getting free stuff. This first month that you guys get in Premier Coaching is the exact adrenaline shot that all of you are looking for, whether you are a new agent or a seasoned grizzled vet, a veteran agent. You know you have to pivot. You know the market's changing. You can see it on the horizon and you're experiencing it. This is the information you need to make this, the, this, this is your market. You will become more successful in this market because of this market than you ever would have been in the old market, in the previous market, where essentially it, there was a massive FOMO in the market, fear of missing out, and essentially people were not that selective on who they used as a real estate agent. Now they will be, and you have to earn the right to be that person through your skill set. That is what Premier Coaching is all about. Join Premier Coaching now. It is free. Did I mention it's free? Listeners, did I tell you that, by the way, Premier Coaching is free? Text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372. Again, text the word Premier to 47372. If you're outside of the continental United States or you just don't want to text, that's fine too. Just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. Members.timandjulieharris.com and join Premier Coaching. And by the way, yes, you do get a coaching session, a daily semi-private coaching session every workday of, you know, every week, you, holiday is excluded, when you join Premier Coaching. So you are going to be in our community. You're going to have access to our private community pages. You're going to be talking directly with one of our Harris certified coaches. You can get all of that right now by simply texting the word Premier to 47372 or going to members.timandjulieharris.com. And remember, if you're texting, message and data rates may apply. And don't forget, all of our Harris uh, certified coaches have not just years and years of experience, but thousands of transactions. So you're in really good hands with them. All right. So we're talking about you, our listeners, Realtors Dream Board and Goals for 2022 and beyond. So here's the question. Are you visualizing your success? We shared some of our stories with you. Are you taking it seriously? So follow this success strategy to create your dream board, or you might call it your vision board for the rest of the year. So what is a dream board? Maybe some of you, this is a new thing for you. It is your personal collage of images, pictures, affirmations, your desires, posted where you see it every day. Your board should inspire and motivate you. Now, I know you can go to a Pinterest you know, page, 
But the point is that when you when it's socked away online or in your computer, it's out of sight, out of mind. So we can go through these steps and then they've got homework after that. Too. Okay. Okay. So that's what a dream board is. The point is that it's visual in front of you all the time. So yep. But do remember a dream board by itself is just essentially a collage of images. Don't make the mistake of doing that. That is a mistake to do that. You have to choose your goals wisely. Choose the goals that are going to be the biggest pullers of your energy. The biggest things that are going to motivate you the most, even on the days that you don't want to work, which is a lot of days, right? The goals that are going to make it so you do what you don't want to do and you don't want to do at the highest level, but then you have to create the action plan behind it. So if you create the goal, for example, of selling a hundred homes, let's say that's your goal, that in itself, you'd be surprised how ineffective having a goal like that is at motivating you. What you want to do is you want to ask yourself, what do I get when I sell a hundred houses? I do. I, you know, what are the things that I'm going to, how is that going to benefit me? And that's again, the reason you go through the real estate treasure map, which is one of the things you get when you join premier coaching It's a fill in the blank business and life plan. Yeah. So we're going to go through these steps fairly quickly because they're easy to follow and, but don't skip any steps. So step number one is complete your real estate treasure map because this is your personal fill in the blank business and life plan. And it includes a very specific financial drill down Goals in five areas of life personalized by you, plus you'll create your own ideal daily schedule. So when you're finished with the treasure map, you'll have a clear vision of what your specific goals actually are. You can't do your dream board if you haven't figured out what your goals are. So step number two is that make sure that you have clarity on your goals in five areas of life. And again, they have to be smart goals. That means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Without this step, it's pretty tough to create that dream board. So step number three, and don't worry, Premier Coaching members, you're going to have these notes with the step-by-step -step plus your homework. So all Julie's notes, and she's going to have lots of specific drill downs. These are all going to be waiting for you in level one of Premier Coaching when you join. So we're going to go through this relatively quick, but you can just hop onto Premier Coaching and download all this stuff yourself. That's right. Okay, step number three, decide where you're going to post your board and go to either Office Max or you can order it on Amazon. Usually these are at least two by three feet, so you have room to post everything that's important to you. Now, step number four, this is where it starts getting fun. Find images of your goals and be creative. Have fun, but also take it really seriously. Remember, Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Dream boards work extremely well, so be specific. They only work really well when you're very specific, applying our SMART goals to that. So let's actually give them a for example, right? So, okay, you're doing that in your future notes, so I will not talk yes. over you. Continue okay. going. That's okay. So Nicely done. Thank you. So where do you get pictures or images? You know, a lot of times people get stuck on this. I don't I don't know what my goals should be. I've never done this before, it's right? It's because the magazine section at Barnes & Noble sucks nowadays. There's hardly any magazines. Well, I gave them three options, not okay, just one. So good. you've got Google Images. You've got Pinterest. You've got Barnes & Noble magazine section. You know, there's being online will give you a lot, but it's nice to be able to actually print something or cut it out of a magazine because it's going to go on a board. It's an art project. Basically. It is an art project, right? Yeah. So some examples, and we don't have to do all of these examples, Tim, but we'll we'll choose. Let's say something that all of you should have if you don't already. Don't do this one. This one's okay. boring. Okay. Go, let's go this one instead. So this is a personal example, and I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna embarrass okay. you a little bit. So bear with me, awesome. okay? All right. Thanks so, for working ahead. I, well, I'm not going to go with these two. Those first two are okay. kind of boring. All right. So Julie and I, uh, and I'm Julie and I are not fans of talking about ourselves. We're humble people from Ohio, but I will tell you something funny that happened yesterday that I did not tell Julie actually a day before it. So my mom brought up a picture of mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and it was our third year in real estate. Yep. And I know I, I, you know, you and I both got fat basically when we sold real estate because yeah, we reward ourselves many late night pizzas, but I didn't realize how fat you got. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, you were, okay. it was funny. I, I didn't show you the picture, but this, but you've obviously lost it. But the point was, is you had to lose about 20 pounds. And I remember yeah. what you did to lose it. Mm -hmm. Like you were in denial about it. So was I, right? You know, yeah. I had gained a lot of weight as well, yeah. but you didn't see yourself how you no. actually were looking. Your eyes weren't, there were, no. there was a filter up and your eyes weren't seeing sure. you and you guys go to Instagram and see, you know, go to Tim and Julie Harris on Instagram. Julie's up, you know, she's ripped now. She's trying to kick my butt in the gym. And most days I dare I say she does. Uh, but moral of the story is, is at that point when we are in our formidable years in our twenties, we both got, had gotten fat yeah. and had we not put a stop to it and decided not to be fat anymore we would have continued to gain weight like sure. most people do, especially where Common we're from, problem. especially where we're from in central Ohio. Right. Mm -hmm. So you decided to lose 20 pounds. And I remember what you did. Mm -hmm. You had a dream board. It was yep. your own. Mm -hmm. And you got a picture. Do you remember of who? Yeah. Uh, Kate. Is it Kate? Not a Kate Hudson. One of the other Kates from uh, blue. Yeah. Yeah. I An forget. actor. It was a surf movie. 
uh, Kate, what was her name? Uh, Hel- Helmsworth, me. something like that. It'll hit me in a second. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Well, anyway, so there's this gal who is about the same, you know, same physicality Blue of Blue Crush was the name Blue of the Blue Crush, movie. yeah. She yeah. was a surfer girl. And I remember you got a picture of her mm-hmm. and you put it on your dream board. Yeah, because she you, looked great. Yes, yeah, she did. And it did not take you but maybe six months and then you had lost all the, probably not even that long, but you'd lost all the weight. You changed your diet. You took seriously eating low carb. We unfortunately stopped gave up eating at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> we stopped. We gave up our beloved pizzas on Friday, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. that was an example of like, so what'd you do? You chose a specific image of what you wanted to look like. That's yes. the goal board. And I did the same thing. Yep. Um, but it's more fun to pick on you than uh-huh. to self-flagellate yeah. myself. And it was <laughs> a definitive goal. Okay. So there's yep. a difference between saying, oh, gosh, you know, I know I need to lose weight. I should probably get in better shape. Well, who doesn't ever say that? Everybody right. thinks that all the time, right? That's just a dream, barely even a dream versus, okay, so what should my goal weight be based on something I've figured out? Uh, maybe based on, you know, my favorite pair of jeans that are three sizes smaller. Okay. So that's say 20 pounds. That is specific and measurable. Okay. So timely means by a certain date and uh, let's see, and written measurable and then post it. Okay. So for example, what we do with a lot of our coaching clients, because almost everybody has a version of this goal. Mm -hmm. Some people it's five pounds, some people it's 50, right? But they have a version. So you were talking about goal stacking. So what really helps you is to choose a date. Like a lot of our clients will have a kid that's getting married or something like that, or they'll have a vacation on the beach, right? That's coming up in say four months. And they want to look great when they're on the beach. They don't want to feel like they have to cover up all the time. So they'll choose that date to have lost the weight by, that way you've got the vacation goal, that's nice, that's filling the cup, and that's measurable and specific too, but you're adding on your fitness goal to that to keep yourself motivated. And your dream board, your vision board can help you with all this. So we didn't do what I'm about to say because it didn't exist when we were essentially going through this physical metamorphosis. But what we would have done nowadays in finding ourselves in the same situation is we would have joined Orange Theory. Yes. And then we would have committed to being at uh, Orange Theory five days of the week. And Mm -hmm. then we would have, you know, as we suggest on this podcast, what a killer way to build your centers of influence a past client. For sure. And we would, you know, here, just in case you guys are listening to us the first time, Orange Theory or something like it where you have forced interaction with the other humans there, just going to the gym with your headset on, not talking to anybody is not going to really get you anything right. other than hopefully a good workout go to orange theory where there's forced community building going on and you get help from the coaches so you don't screw it up exactly and you go but the key is to go to the same classes so you get to know the same people obviously go to the classes with the most people generally speaking the early morning classes where people are le- the least friendly so choose <laughs> <They're grumpy. laughs> choose times when people are a little bit friendlier just choose wisely and then uh, again show up every single day now that's a good example of goal stacking so if we were doing this today uh, you would have a goal specifically of losing 20 pounds and maybe you'd given yourself six months to do it and how are you going to do it so there's the goal and you'd use the example of looking hot on the beach Mm -hmm. Uh, and by the way we did do that it was mexico yep i remember okay okay and then you do uh actually i do remember that was puerto Vallarta, wasn't it Mm -hmm. okay so then you choose the goal backwards of then saying okay i'm going to sign up for orange theory it's something i absolutely do not want to do and i don't want to do at the highest level I'm then going to have external yeah. accountability that comes from having essentially having this group of new friends around me. And if I don't show up, they're going to ask where the hell I was on Tuesday. Yes. That is what happens when you start to form a group around uh, with other people who are also on the quest, on a similar quest to you, is they start relying on you. You start relying on them. And even on the days you don't want to do it, you're not going to want to let them down. So you still show up because you don't want them to feel like you're letting them down. That's a way of manipulating yourself. But again, this goes to goal stacking. This is one of the things that we teach you in Premier Coaching. So Julie would have had the goal of losing 20 pounds in six months. She would have you know, given herself the award of looking hot on the beach which she did do. And then she would have nowadays gone and backfilled it with having a specific plan on how to lose the weight by going to Orange Theory on a regular basis. Now, what are all the little micro goals that are happening along the way? Think about that. She's going to make more friends and, by the way, create a larger centers of influence and past client for the sake of real estate transaction because she's on the quest to lose weight to accomplish this specific goal. Yes, but I'm also having a more disciplined schedule because I have to be accountable to show up someplace on time. Okay, and let me just give you an example. When Tim talks about the expansion of your center of influence, we've done dedicated podcasts and podcast series about that. Of course, we all like, you know, repeat and referral business, but For example, I remember when we were going to Orange Theory in Georgetown, typically we would work out with two, at least two different builders. Okay. There was a new construction sales rep who we became friendly with, who was in charge of a development down the road. Yep. 
Um, gosh, I know that there were at least four or five uh, buyer and seller referrals that we referred to coaching clients. We don't sell real estate. Julie and I did not yeah. sell real estate when we lived in Texas. But so we do talk about real estate all the time. We do. Well, they because that's what happens when you're around people. It's like, well, what do you do? Okay, well, what do you guys do? And then we'll try to explain to them. They go, so what do you do? You know, like the Ford script. <laughs> right. Because hmm. they would, but we wouldn't spend a lot of time talking about, you know, what we do for a living because, you know, real estate coaching and training, we write books, we do podcasts and well, you know, we are, we're part of an EXP, you know, organization. We have all these other things. That's a little bit too obtuse for most people. Yeah. And for you guys, it's a very simple conversation. I help people buy and sell real estate. That is your answer to that question. And then obviously pivot back to asking them questions and getting to know them. And then what inevitably will happen, invariably will happen, it always happens, is everyone's going to want to start talking about real estate. And then what's going to happen the second you start seeing, well, when you start seeing these people on a more regular basis, they're just going to go right to real estate and it's not going to be, um, you know, it's going to be them asking real inquisitive questions and you always end the conversation with, and you can write, you can say this however you'd like. The point is you have to ask. If you don't ask, they're not, don't assume that just because people know you have a real estate license, that they're going to send you any referrals unless you ask. I promise mm -hmm. you listeners, you have to ask. And one of the simplest things to say is, by the way, who do you know who's thinking about buying or selling real estate that I should be helping in this market? You can do your own version of that, but ask the question. Don't just leave it out there. Look, you know, give them a, you know, information on new listings or what's sold or what's not selling or all the rest of it. You know, the sort of national inquire profile of the local free, real the estate free market. infomercial version don't, right. don't blast them with just basic information you've got to ask for the business with the world's most simple script that you it, just did exactly and it's a script because it's a script that all of you even the most amiable uh least direct people on planet earth can ask that question because you're ending it with whom i can help who do you know who's thinking about buying or selling real estate in this market whom i who i can help and, and if it's them they'll tell you yep. this this is easier than saying hey tim when do you plan on moving we're not doing that we're talking about who do you know who I could help. I love to help friends and family of my, you know, people that I already know. Super easy, non-confrontational, very amiable, and people love to help each other. The other thing I like about that script is that you can't give a yes or no answer. Yeah. You just, well, you have to think. I mean, maybe they don't know anybody, but they're at least going to give it more thought than, you know, I, when do you plan on moving or something like that. Now, the more advanced version of that is who are the two or three people you know yes. who are thinking about buying or selling real estate in this market that I should be helping? And so the, that question, again, don't change it. Don't take the bite out of the question. Don't make the question ineffective because you made it less direct. If you make it less direct, I promise you they're not going to send you referrals right. because you haven't essentially told them that you're looking for referrals. They're going to assume subconsciously mostly that you haven't asked them for business because you're too busy or because you're, I don't know. Well, nothing you don't good. work like with people like them or right, you don't exactly. work in that neighborhood, that price range, et cetera. People make up thoughts in their head when you don't tell them what to think, which is you're in real estate. You're, it's your pleasure to help people buy and sell real estate. If you sell insurance and you're seeing, or if you go to the gym, Orange Theory, on a regular basis and the person you sit next to when you're about to go into the actual workout room sells insurance and that insurance person never wants, and you know they sell mostly residential, you know, retail Homeowners. type. Yeah. And they never once, and they know you're in real estate and they know you sell real you're successful and they never once ask you uh, if, you know, you guys can somehow connect and they can, you know, how some way of asking you for business. What is it that your mind tells you about them? They're lazy. They're complacent. They're too busy. too busy. They must not like me. They must not want to work with my customers. Your brain backfills with nothing but negative information about why that person hasn't actually asked you for a referral. Well, your centers of influence and your past clients, your mom thinks the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. You have got to ask for referrals every single time. So again, guys, it's habit stacking. A goal is a dream with an action plan. Kate Bosworth. Julie, ah, thank you. <laughs> Julie chose the picture of Kate Bosworth. She put it up on her dream board. Um, she did look like that girl. I promise you guys, she got a really great shape and she never got in bad shape again. Um, and that, you know, essentially having gone through the process, it was enough to make her realize that she didn't want to, that she knows she had to take care of herself. I mean, she was getting older. She wasn't able to eat like she was able to eat before. You know, things happen as you get older. And I'll tell you something's kind of fascinating. Um, if you guys want to lose weight, and I've had people who over the years thank me for just saying this on the podcast, yeah. mm -hmm. one of the, you know, frankly, guys, just cut the carbs. That's it. If you cut the carbs, even if you don't work out that really hardly at all, we want you to work out, right? Obviously. But if you don't work out at all, but you cut the carbs, you're going to be doing more positive things for your body that you can possibly imagine. 
you will find yourself losing weight just because you're cutting the carbs and your body is burning body fat, uh, essentially th that you're, we're, you were supplementing with when you were eating stuff that had a lot of carbs in it, cut the carbs. I promise you that will make a world of difference. If you cut the carbs and you combine it with a cardiovascular working out like uh, Julie Harris and I did, you will be amazed how fast your body will transform. Yes. And you know, the other thing that I've noticed, and I talk to coaching clients about this as well, is you guys are on the road all the time. You're going to appointments, you're showing property. And some of the reason that you have this uh, weight issue that all of you have in your goals is because the snacks that you grab on the road are not good for you. Driving it to the drive through and getting a cheeseburger every day is not good for you. So plan ahead and have protein snacks so you don't get as hungry. You've got it in your car. You've got it for your buyers. You've got it for your clients. It's just smart planning. Most people eat to make themselves feel a certain way, not because they're hungry. And so one of the little hacks that I did for myself, because I have a, a massive sweet tooth, is I, I do. Uh, yeah. And so what I did is I basically asked myself before I put any, and I still do this to this day. I do it without thinking. Am I eating to feel a certain way or am I eating because I'm hungry? Am I eating because I'm bored, because I want to award myself with something? Am I eating because it makes Creative me Creative avoidance. Am I, right. Am I eating because it makes me feel comfortable because this was the tomato soup that my grandma used to give me or something like that. So when I stopped the emotional connection between food uh, and what I was putting in my head, then all of a sudden I was in control of it because so much before that was just subconscious and advertisers of foods. And when you go to the grocery oh, they store, they all know that they're all trying to trigger you to buy emotionally, not because you're hungry. So if you want to, we give you a whole bunch of nice little, you know, ways to lose weight right there. We're not fitness coaches in any way, though we probably could be at this point. Yeah. The reality of it is, is start with the question, am I eating because I'm trying to make myself feel a certain way or because I'm hungry? And then combine low carb with some sort of cardiovascular working out. Oh, I can't. It's really super hard. Damn right. It's hard. It's hard when you start, but then your body starts to acclimate to the fact that it has to start burning body fat. And then you are going to look yourself in the mirror and you're going to go, holy crap, Tim and Julia were right. I cannot yeah. believe how much weight I've lost. And here's the thing. We talked about all the side benefits of doing that, but what are all the other benefits of seeing yourself transform and getting in good shape? How are you going to feel towards life in general? How are you going to start when you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, damn, right? When you're now buying clothes that are the same size that you maybe wore in the past or maybe never wore in the past, but you always wanted to wear in the past. When you see how people are interacting with you differently, your confidence level goes through the roof. All of a sudden you're walking taller, your shoulders are back, you're looking people in the eye. All of a sudden you're more motivated to learn how to be a professional real estate. All of these side stream benefits come from setting the big goals. This is a good idea. Now, I really like this next one, Julie. I'm going to choose this next example, mm -hmm. this vacation one. Oh, but yeah. let's choose, let's choose. Oh, did you? Oh, yes, you did. Let, okay, go ahead and read that one. Okay, that so we're back to your dream board or your vision board. So let's say that you want to go on an outrageously fantastic vacation. Where, when, how much? Remember, keep your, your goals, uh, your dreams, I'm sorry, your goals smart, right? Measurable and specific. So go to Barnes & Noble magazine section, find the travel magazines, think bigger than normal. So don't fly on Yak Air when you can fly first class. If you want to take your family to Disney, get a Disney tour guide. That's not cheap, by the way. And skip the lines. Totally worth it. Maybe you've always wanted to go to Paris. Well, Google the top 10 hotels in Paris and choose one. Choose a date. Put a deposit down. So one of the things we're doing with our coaching clients right now, Tim, on our private Facebook uh, section just for our coaching clients. So you have to be a member to be part of, of that. Premier. You of can Premier. Be, yeah, Premier, yeah. Okay, so we've been talking about this, of course, because we're about to come up in three days. We're going to be starting the second half of the year. So it's a good time to recalibrate those goals. Our coaching clients are posting pictures of their dream boards, their vision boards. And I'll tell you one of the things that I do is I first congratulate them. They've got a lot of great, fantastic dreams. Many of them are quite specific. But I ask them to put a little printout of the date by which they will have it. So it's not, you know, it's great if you want to go to Disney, but when are you doing it? How much is it going to cost you? Let's make a real practical example of this. Um, so this is something that I know probably at this point, tens of thousands of our podcast listeners and coaching clients have employed. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you guys what I'm about to tell you is Navy SEAL, uh, you know, Bud's boot camp level accountability. And some of you, frankly, are just going to, uh, you know, fall to pieces under the pressure <laughs> that I'm about to give you. Nice okay, here morning. it is. All right. If you have children, uh, bring your children in on your goal setting, because trust me when I tell you, when you f say, for example, uh, choose the goal of taking your family to Disney World, as soon as you tell your kids about that, you will, ha you have no idea what brutal little drill sergeants they can be. 
And here's how you do it. Create a uh, visual accountability. Uh, we will suggest you make something that looks like a thermometer. So imagine a large thermometer that's maybe, I don't know, three or four feet tall. Paint, well, maybe not that tall, maybe two or three feet tall. Uh, then draw, all, you know, take some eight and a half by 11s, tape them together, and then draw a thermometer. At the top of the thermometer, I want you to draw or write the word Disney World, and then I want you to put the date. Now, here's what you do, and this is high level, no bullshit accountability. Then what you're going to do is you're going to use the real estate treasure map. You're going to ask your coach for help if you need it, and you're going to then figure out how many transactions you need to actually close, not to just pay your bills and pay your taxes and do the things you have to do, but now we're going to add in the things you want to do, which in this case is saving for Disney World, which by the way, is really expensive, like stupidly expensive. It, it truly is. is. Yeah. It, it's crazy. Every year it's more expensive. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so you're going to set the goal of taking your family to Disney World. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to set the goal of going to Disney World. Now we'll suggest that you put a deposit in some variety down on that trip. You can go to Disney Travels. You can put a deposit down on the trip. So let's say you choose the date that's uh, six months from now, let's say. And then you're going to choose the specific date of when you want to be there. Let's just say you want to be there for Christmas. And let's say you're going to Orlando, you want to go to Irvine, wherever it is. So you're going to write down the specific date you're going to go there. You can Google, go online, find a travel agent, or maybe even Disney's travel agency. And then you can essentially put a deposit down on it. And let's say this trip is going to cost you to do it right. I'm going to just choose uh, you know, 15 grand, 10 grand, doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Let's choose whatever number you want to choose. That is the goal that's at the top. It's Disney World. You know, over Christmas, maybe you can go on a Disney cruise, which I'm praying that Zoe never discovers, frankly. <laughs> I mean, if Zoe ever discovers Disney cruises, I'm just, I mean, yuck. Anyway, <laughs> double yuck, actually. So anyway, so we're going to write, uh, going to Disney. Here's the specific date you're going to be there. Here's the cost that's going to happen. You figured out using your treasure map how much money you have to earn every single week. In our treasure map, we drill down your not just monthly expenses. We drill down to how much money you have to earn per day. Again, accountability, practical, tactical. Julie and I are not just make a dream board. We're make a dream board, but here's your action plan. The juice is in the action plan, not the collage. Be very clear about that. Most people will only tell you to do the act, the dream board. They'll never actually tell you how to accomplish any of the goals on the dream board. So what's the point? So we're going to do that. That's what real estate treasure map. And that's what coaching is all about. Then you're going to figure out that you need to sell, I don't know, let's say 10 houses, just picking a number where the average commission is going to be this amount of money in order for, you know, say 15 grand or 10 grand in order for you to accomplish the goal of going to Disney. You figured this all out. It's all math. It's all transactions. You know exactly what you have to do. Now you have this big goal. Then here's the, you know, the real studs that are listening. You tell your kids about it. You show your kids what the goal is. And then you post that big thermometer on the refrigerator or someplace publicly where the whole family can see what mom or dad is or is not doing in accomplishment of that goal on schedule so that they can be there in six months. When you do that, when you bring your family in on goal setting like that, it could just be your spouse. It could be your partner. It might be your friends, but frankly, your friends will waffle. Kids are the greatest ass writers ever. You take you, you guys with kids know what I'm talking about. You do that. You set it up like that. You bring the family in on that. The probability of you not accomplishing your goal is about zero. Now, if you want a habit stack or a goal stack on top of that, which we'd suggest you do, let's say at that same amount of time, you want to lose 25 pounds. We just went through the, you know, the, the essentially the overview on how to accomplish that. So now you're going to go to Orange Theory. You're going to lose weight. You're going to make new real estate clients. By the way, you might be able to find all 10 of your deals having gone to Orange Theory as awesome. you are moving towards the accomplishment of uh, Disney World. You guys want to know how the universe brings you what you want. It's when you get off your ass and you go for it by following through on an action plan that you create for yourself. You have to get an action for this to happen. It is not enough to just post a bunch of stuff on your board. Yeah, it's not and, enough. And it's and guys, the the what makes me frustrated, frankly, when I see a lot of this mind stuff, mindset stuff that's out there, is I wonder, and I don't have an answer for this, but I wonder if they intentionally don't tell you how to actually accomplish the goal because a they don't know it, or b they don't want you to do it, so that you have to keep on coming back to the well for more information and how to goal set without actually having accomplished goals. And it life is short enough without having to waste time with time wasting ideas. So the suggestion is, is choose your goals wisely. Now you don't have to have a billion goals. 
the big goals, the big rocks, as uh, Fred Gross used to say, mm-hmm. right? Those are the, for example, you did a podcast your, on that. Yeah, I know we did. That's true. You want to put the big rocks in your jar first. And if you put all the little rocks in your jar first, the big rocks will never fit in. So that's the visualization. And you can even do this exercise. This would be great for us to do with Zoe. Yep. You can even do this exercise with your family. Choose, get some big rocks, write down with a big rock, write on the big rock where the goal is. You know, don't choose too big of a jar, but then put the big rocks in the jar first. And then the smaller rocks represent the smaller goals. The smaller goals are supposed to be there in service of the larger goals. Again, goal stacking. Does this make sense? It does. So a smaller goal in service of your larger goal could be something like start getting up at the same time every single day and stop hitting the snooze button for the rest of your life. That's something in service of, well, why are you doing that in the first place? So that you get it can get into action. Remember yesterday we talked about your ideal daily schedule. So things like that. But again, this comes about down to the visualization. It's not enough to just sock it away on Pinterest and not look at it, except for now and then when you wake up in the middle of the night and think about it. You've got to make this a powerful thing because it, when done correctly, this really does work. And the thing is, when I was uh, doing the outline for this, I was thinking, you know how we teach them to track their everything in their business on whiteboards, right? You track your listings, you track your pendings, all that. That is a version of a, a dream board because sure. you know you're supposed to have 10 active listings at all times. You look up and you see some white space. It's telling you exactly what to do. And that works so well. I, I mean, I can't, I would never coach anybody not to do that. Well, what this comes back down to is making it so, when we talked about, we talk about this all the time, but we will occasionally get calls from agents who want to, it's always a hundred homes. I want to sell a hundred homes per year. You guys did it your first year in the business. How did you do it? Well, join premier coaching. That's how we did it. Yeah. But I want to do this. And then I'll always ask the question. Well, like, so I'll ask them why, why is it you want to sell it a hundred homes? And they'll never have an answer. Honestly, just guys, sounds good. I, exactly. Well, it's because my office manager or my, whoever told me I sold 60 last year, I'd be able to sell a hundred this year. And well, how do you feel about that? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, it's, it seems like I should be progressing and it seems like I did, you know, 75 this year. I should be able to do 100 next year. Well, why is it you, what's going to happen as a result of you selling 100 homes? Well, they have no emotional attachment to the outcome. That's where I'm going with this. They will not have a single reason why they're going to put in the extra effort to sell 100 homes. And by the way, selling 100 homes is different than increasing your net profit. In this day and age when you can buy leads, buying leads and actually making a profit from those transactions, those are not the same thing. So do not confuse large volume agents with agents who are making the most profit margin because they're never the same. Generally speaking, and this is a fallacy in the bot uh, branding uh, sort of business model that's been so prolific, is the, there's a, um, the less profit is indicative of a higher overhead business. It makes sense, right? So if you're buying your business, spending all your business, your money on branding and buying leads, you're going to make less profit. Well, one of our tenets and one of our actual goals, and this is something we didn't share with all you guys, if by the time that I was 40 and Julie was 39, we wanted to essentially have the option of retiring. We accomplished that goal about a year late, but we accomplished the goal. How did we plan on doing that? By buying rental properties, having them paid off and living off the cash flow. That was a plan we set for ourselves when we were in our early 20s. And we were always, I can't say we did it consistently because we didn't, but we did uh, hold true to the North Star that we would one day live to the point where our money was working for us and we no longer had to work for our money. Julie and I stayed true to that. There were a few years where we got, uh, where we meandered into sort of the building a team and all the rest of it, where our profit margin got to the point where we really couldn't uh, buy rental properties. And then we got back on track. And then we were very laborious about adding rental properties because we wanted to have it to the point where we are 40 and 39, where we could actually, it was 41 and 40 by the time we did it, but where we could actually live off our cash flow. And that was a huge goal for us. That was something that we always would run filters through. So should we upgrade our personal house now, Julie? Will will this, in, in, or should we stay on path, so on target, so we can actually, you know, buy another rental property this year? Julie, should we, you know, go to, uh, you know, three weeks in Paris or should we this or should we other thing? And the answer was, while we were in our formidable years, which is virtually all of our 20s and most of our 30s, we're always staying true to the accumulation of more assets so that we could be financially free. 
And that was a sacrifice that we chose to make. And let me tell you, it was one of the greatest decisions we ever made when we were in our 20s. You guys can do the same thing, no matter if you're in your 20s, if you're in your 50s, you're in your 60s. But you can balance it out more because, frankly, there's more ways to build your real estate business and make more. (laughs) I mean, if we had, I was on a call the other day, yesterday, actually, with a guy with a team of 20 is up in Canada. He's probably listening to us today. And he was talking to me about just different things he was thinking about doing. I said, here's what you should do. Here's 35. I said, if I were 35, here's exactly what I would do. I would continue being successful selling real estate like you're doing. And then I would build an EXP royalty uh, downline. Absolutely. At Revenue Share Group. Yep, as soon as possible. As soon as possible. I would absolutely positively not think twice, do not stop, uh, pass, go. Absolutely positively join EXP and and build a revenue share group. EXP's revenue share model, the whole business model of the EXP is like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, and if we had that available to us when we were younger, I cannot even imagine where we'd be today. And I'm not complaining about where we are now. So the moral of the story here, guys, is if you are interested in joining EXP, uh, please do consider us as your EXP Realty sponsors. We would uh, consider it an honor to do so. And you can text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. In the meantime, guys, listen, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for allowing Julie and I to live to our, uh, our life's professional and, I, dare I say, personal mission of being of service to all of you. It is our pleasure and it is our honor to be your real estate coaches Uh, And please remember to help us get the word out. Do share this podcast with at least three people you know. And as always, uh, please do like, subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you can think of adding a comment, if you're over on YouTube, please do so. We certainly appreciate your support. Anything you'd like to say, guys, for around the bend? Get those vision boards up and use them. Be very specific. Be careful what you wish for, because when you do this right, you're going to get it. And remember, all these notes, along with the real estate treasure map, is waiting for you in the first level of Premiere. So your homework is, if you've not already done so, Text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372. Or just go over to members.timandjulieharris.com. Members.timandjulieharris.com. Remember, if you're texting, message and data rates may apply. Have a fantastic day. This podcast is a part of the C Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.